if you've been paying to attention to the, uh, let's call it, modern online dial-up scene, or whatever, you've probably heard of the tactic of making your own home dial ISP on the cheap, usually with a device like this, the uh, Cisco 112, SPA 112, or the equivalent uh, SPA 212, which gave you two lines, which you can connect to a pair of modems, each connected to your machines of choice, which will allow you to dial them up together and, I don't know, sort of internet, play games, and whatever. And sure, this does work after a bunch of meddling, and even then, like, you might not get the most ideal results. Maybe you can have, like, the lowest level, net for jitter level be medium. And even then, even if you have the most ideal configuration for this sort of thing, I would still not recommend it. And one of the reasons why is, well, the latency. See, uh, phone modems are very sensitive to latency. They really don't like it. So when you introduce latency, there's going to be a bunch of negotiation issues, uh, asymmetric transfer and receive rates, you name it. In fact, I think it's better if I just show you directly. So right now, I have one machine connected to the left modem, which provides PPP. It's this laptop right here, actually. See, it goes there, and it's gonna run a PPP server. It's gonna run a PPP server, uh, there we go. And on the other one, which is connected right down there, I'm running uh, WinUAE with the Miami stack which I will use to dial right about now. Resetting. Another dialing. Pay attention to the no tones. That sounded pretty horrible, right? You know, they could barely sing to each other, and it was just a mess. Now, here, it does say that the transfer rates are equal, 336, 336, but although that, I've never had that happen before. This is like the absolute best case scenario, and even then, it's gonna be, there's gonna be some problems. Now, sure, you can still, I don't know, go do stuff like go on the internet. Like with AmiWeb, for example, this will work if I just type in something. Let's try Google. Why not? Sure, it's gonna look it up and it's gonna download. Not exactly very great. Also, I apologize for the flicker. But there's one problem with this that I would like to show you. And that is in regards to latency even after you make a successful dial. If I go to my Amiga shell here, uh, I'm gonna run Miami Ping, and you'll see these latencies are pretty bad. Around 400 milliseconds, sometimes more. Worst case scenario I had was actually like 600 milliseconds, 650. And that was when I left the network jitter level to be very high. So the higher your jitter level is, the worse this will get. So what's the alter alternative? What do I recommend as the better option for an in-home dial-up setup? Well, this, one of these Exceltel MS-208 PB analog PBXs. Now, why is that? Well, I just said in the name, it's analog. You can just connect two of your lines to the extensions, which back there say 601, 602. And you just dial those extensions. You don't even need to, really to, need to configure anything on the PBX. So, as I said, it's an analog PBX. Cisco's like these, and similar, like the Linksys PAP2T and other ATAs, are almost always exclusively VoIP. And they will do conversions from VoIP to analog and the other way around, even if you only use the local lines because that's just the way they, they're built. It's an unavoidable step. And that step is going to introduce line latency. You really do not want line latency. And one of the reasons I showed was right now. 
And even then, if you have a if your network jitter level is too high or the, just the lines don't like each other for whatever reason, which I've had happen, your modems might not even be able to negotiate. They'll just be stuck in a loop. So let me just show you how big of a difference it is when you use a proper analog line. So we have our PPP server running again. I'm gonna open up Miami once again. We're gonna dial. Pay attention to the tones. Oh, never mind. I didn't connect the lines. As I said, small mistake aside, I didn't connect the right line. So we're gonna try again. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. As you can see, it was perfect. No latency on the line anywhere. It just dialed and we get the full rate consistently. Let's try doing doing a ping one once again. And well look at that. We almost halved our latencies. Now I don't know why they're this large. It's probably because of the U UAE overhead as well. But normally you get like maybe 133 milliseconds at at the worst, in like the most ideal condition on a modern system or whatever that sort. So that's really all I want to show. So what purpose does a device like this have then? Well, if you want to do something like a long distance call with a friend who also has an ATA, or maybe just remotely access it, whatever, as long as it's just not in your home, then Okay, there's pro you can probably get one of these and get at least a lower baud rate of anything got getting right. But if you're only going to be doing this exclusively in home, get yourselves one of these. They these are not expensive. These are, these, I'll just show you in a, in a moment where I found this listing. Yep, good old AliExpress, which on which is the seller Exceltel does actually run an official store. And you can buy from them whatever you want. You can want a UX plug, China, UK, EU, whatever. And the total cost of everything, these are in diners, but around a hundred euro, right? Total. Which may seem much, but when you look at how expensive te proper telephone line simulators are, which for our intents and purposes do the exact same thing as this, uh, they're much, much more expensive. Just not worth it, considering you can get one of these very easily. So if you just order this, hook them up to the extensions, in my case 601, 602, and just dial those numbers directly, it'll just work. You don't even need to configure this thing out of the box. So yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. So if you want to do proper dial-up at home with no fuss, get yourself along with these.